On today's show, Volvo shares its vision for a fully autonomous car. The piston engine gets a tweak to make it more efficient, and Mercedes finally gives us all the juicy details on its fully electric SUV. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the voice of the global automotive industry. Sales continue to hum along in the U.S. market. Automakers sold 1.4 million new vehicles in August, almost exactly the same number that they sold a year ago. The SAR came to 16.6 million vehicles, up slightly from last year. The full-line automakers reported mixed results. General Motors saw its sales drop almost 13 percent. Although GM does not report monthly sales anymore, Ward's Auto provides a good estimate. Toyota saw its sales drop 2 percent, but it still outsold Ford, which saw its sales go up 4.5 percent. FCA had a terrific month, up a strong 10 percent, thanks to Jeep and Ram. In fact, the Ram pickup outsold the Chevrolet Silverado. Both Honda and Nissan also posted gains. On the luxury side, those brands also posted mixed results. Lexus topped the sales charts, even though sales dropped 7%. Mercedes dropped a whopping 17%, while BMW eked out a small gain, and Audi continued its strong climb. In fact, Audi is now selling nearly as many cars a month as Mercedes and BMW. Cadillac saw its sales slip, while JLR posted a nice gain, but all that came from Land Rover since sales dropped at Jaguar. Porsche also posted a double-digit drop. And now let's bore into sales of passenger cars. Sales plummeted by 90,000 units, probably the worst drop we've ever seen as consumers continue to abandon passenger cars and switch over to CUVs, SUVs, and pickups. Passenger cars only accounted for 29% of all vehicles sold, and the drop is across the board. While GM, Ford, and FCA posted the biggest drops amongst the full-line manufacturers, Toyota, Honda, and Nissan also posted double-digit drops. We've been speculating that the drop in passenger car sales would have to bottom out at some point, but it's actually getting worse. Still to come, Mercedes takes the wraps off its EQC electric and Volvo unveils its vision of an autonomous car. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. And by Exxon Mobil. No more teasers. Mercedes finally revealed the EQC in its totality. The first thing we noticed is the grille is not as radical as some of the other EQ concepts, but we still think it will be polarizing to some. An otherwise Mercedes-looking grille is wrapped by a thick chrome bar and a large black panel surface that connects the two headlights. They are further connected together at nighttime by a light bar that runs along the top of the grille. There's also a more upscale version where the chrome bar has been blacked out and the TriStar logo is attached to the grill by two horizontal bars. The lower fascia is different as well, and we actually think it looks kind of like a handlebar mustache. The rear is highlighted by LED taillights linked together by a long light bar. Mercedes says the interior has an electro look, reflected in the ribbed edge of the instrument panel, which resembles the cooling ribs of an amplifier. We say look how minimalistic the interior is and how the center cluster and infotainment screen look similar to the new A-Class sedan and Sprinter van. Power will come from two electric motors, one at the front, one at the rear, which combine for over 400 horsepower. An 80 kilowatt hour battery pack is estimated to yield 450 kilometers or about 280 miles of range and that's based on the European NEDC test cycle. The EQC should go on sale in Europe in the middle of 2019, and it's going to be interesting to see how much it costs. Volvo wants to expand its business beyond being a traditional car maker, and it's looking at autonomy as a way to achieve that. The company just introduced an electric autonomous concept called the 360C, 
But instead of being a technology showcase, it's meant to highlight the potential business case around self-driving cars. The company believes that AVs will give people the freedom to live further from cities and that travel time can be more productive or fun. So it designed the interior for four potential uses, sleeping, a mobile office, a living room, or an entertainment space. Volvo says this could allow it to compete with air, bus, or train travel with customers who want to travel in privacy. The piston engine is far from dead, and coming up next, we'll show you how it continues to get more efficient. Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. The EPA tested the new Ram 1500 with the mild hybrid system called eTorque, and here are the results. The 3.6 liter V6 with eTorque, which is the only way you can get the V6, gets 20 miles to the gallon in the city, 25 on the highway, and 22 combined. That's 3 mpg better in the city and 2 more mpg combined compared to the previous gen V6 truck without e-torque. The V8 with the mild hybrid system gets 17 miles to the gallon in the city, 23 on the highway, and 19 combined, which is a 2 mpg improvement in the city and 1 on the highway over the non-e-torque V8. On top of the fuel economy boost, e-torque also adds 90 pound-feet of torque to the V6 engine and 130 to the V8. The diesel is still the engine of choice in the commercial vehicle segment, and suppliers like Mala continue to make the diesel more efficient. It just came out with a new kind of piston coating that reduces the heat absorbed by the pistons. This reduces the demand for piston cooling, which allows for higher exhaust gas temperatures and enables the waste heat recovery system to extract more power. The coatings also heat up the exhaust gas after treatment system faster after a cold start. That reduces NOx emissions and makes it easier for OEMs to meet current and future regulations. And not too bad for something that simply coats the pistons. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and please join us again tomorrow.